coal mining industry uh, was established in the mid-60s. We don't quite understand what it was all established. We don't know what the contracts were made, but the uh, consequences, what the mining industry has brought forth was, uh, wasn't really noticed until years later. They've extracted uranium, they extract oil and gas by fracking, they extract coal. The mining is polluting the air. So that's what we breathe, and then like when it rains, it comes down to the soil. The water that's pumped by the mine, we feel it here because the springs are gone. It's Peabody Coal Mine trying to wipe out all these people so that they can expand and to take the, something that's not even good in the first place. The elders, you know, they literally, they were living in a, like a, a state of fear. They resist relocation because they wanted to be where they came from, and that is resistance. They don't have running water there, they don't have electricity, that's resistance. This Black Mesa region is these four sacred mountains that define the boundaries and the landscape of what I'm saying Dineta is are the four sacred mountains that sit like in each of the four sacred cardinal directions, east, south, west, and north. This Black Mesa region, in that sense, is sacred in the way that she is the female mountain that represents the mother, the wife. And so this is why people said this is a sacred landscape because they see her as alive. For ourselves, you know, the best way to to be like our ancestors, you know, try to ward off ward off a lot of the the government issues is to stay here and live here and live our ancestral way of life, you know. There's a lot of history just from where we stand today, right here, right now. Just a quarter mile, maybe three three eighths of a mile from where we stand is where my uh, grandmother Bayaja is. is that's where that's where she's buried. And uh, we still go to that place for strength when uh, things aren't going our way, just to go and ask, uh, Grandmother, you've lived through these days. You've seen everything. So I come to you for strength. I come to you for, for guidance. Reagan was president, he deemed this area a national sacrifice zone. So that allowed for the industry to come in. This lake, it's called Morgan Lake, it was built to cool down the power plant. It's one of the dirtiest coal fired power plants in the country. In a year, they emit about 70 to 100 million tons of coal combustion waste. So that's the stuff that we're breathing in, that's what's leaching into the, to the ground, into the water. It opened in 1963. It provides power for Utah, New Mexico, Arizona. Think about the way people who are living in Phoenix, you know, they have like swimming pools and golf courses and, you know, they just consume so much water and energy that, you know, what are we left with? We're left with the poverty. Our people live so poor, you know, you look at our roads, our roads are shot. <laughs> our education system sucks. They make billions of dollars off of the Navajo and Hopi people. 
and we're left with contamination, we're left with poverty, we're left with disease. The land means everything, the land is everything. It's not the same, it's, not, it's never gonna be the same. The aquifers and the landscape, the wildlife, and just the way the history, the, the way the life cycle was, out, was like out here will never be the same. Maybe we'll get a response. You can come out and coyote hunt any day, especially on a cold day like this. It's good hunting weather today. There's an abundance of mule deer out here. And then of course there's elk, cougars, and uh, bears. I haven't come across a Navajo that's a trophy hunter. We go after the meat and the Navajo tradition. We don't bring the antlers home. That's a big no-no. It's not a part of our culture to hang uh, an antler on the, on the wall in the house. So I guess it's got a lot. It's got everything to do with respect for the animal. The BIA doesn't upkeep a lot of the water tanks, so a lot of community members don't know that the water is contaminated or that it's only for livestock use only. The contamination comes from uranium, and even within our area on the like central and eastern side of Navajo, the wells are contaminated by uranium. This is the only water that people are given. This is the only option that they have, and this is sadly also the reason why our cancer rates are so high. Any exposure to radiation is bad. A lot of birth defects, reproductive justice issues, that all ties into uranium. Yes, 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 the elders out here, you know, that's the way of life. If you have your livestock, they give you food, you know, you make blankets out of them. The fact that they can say that you're only allowed to have this amount of sheep. Part of it is also trying to capture some of that knowledge that wasn't taught to us. It was taken away from us because we were forced to go into these westernized schools and learn what American history wanted us to know. People's houses are right there, less than a mile away from these drag lines. They live there because that's their form of resisting and telling industry, no, you can't mine from under us. We're going to be here just like our grandparents, our great-grandparents, our great-great-grandparents. Hello, and hey, I don't know where they think they got to eat up in the
की शादी हो जो big trailers out here and have literally forced people into their homes, you know, with like guns. For someone to point guns at elders and tell them to back up and for them to just come in here and take what's theirs, you know, it, it's just not right. And, you know, it really hurts that that people do that, you know? And it's not talked about, and it's not the first impoundment that happened. It's a tactic that the government, you know, they try to take every little thing that they can just to get rid of us. The building of the country happened from stealing the land, like Catherine says, my mother. The red part of the flag stands for indigenous blood that was spilt on this land. Millions of lives, you know. The white part of the flag stands for who spilt that blood which is in the name of Christianity, you know, the white-skinned people who came to this land and the stars that are on the flag represent all the land bases, the indigenous lands that were stolen and lost. So that's why it's called a killer flag. We're just continuing the process of getting the clay ready for our gathering that we're going to be having. Um, it's going to go longer than we thought, but we're still here. We just relocated because this place is warmer. <laughs> well, what, what they're actually doing now is they're, they're refining the clay. Last week they went out and mined the, the, the raw clay itself. They're dissolving the clay into a very, very refined slurry and they're filtering out all the small pebbles and all the roots and little tiny plants and detritus and stuff and the purified slurry that's dripping uh -huh. that, that falls into the bucket that's going to be what they're going to be using for the event it's one of the art forms that combines like a little bit of each element in nature you know there's a there's an earth element there's a water element <clears throat> there's a wood element when you fire the pots there's a fire element all the elements that have to be present during the process of making pottery and it's, it's wonderful being able to interact with the natural world in that way. I know what you see in the end is a bowl or a pipe or a sculpture piece but the actual process of making it involves nature and that's one of the amazing things about working with 
with traditional pottery, with, with clay, mining your clay, doing the whole process by hand. You're a part of all that, so <clears throat> that's what I like. <laughs> Are you one of those special Navajos that can flip over a fibrant with her bare hands? Yeah. <laughs> you just handled that hot piece of log there. Wasn't that hot though? It wasn't that hot? No. You just gotta know which ones to grab it and where. It's important for these students though specifically because a lot of their ancestry is traced back to these lands and working with the clay, working with the actual earth incarnate from this location, from this area, is kind of a way for them to get back in touch with their, with their roots. Our goal is to just bring out more indigenous youth, Diné, whoever wants to come out, and just regain that connection to our old ways of life, reconnecting to the elders and everything they did for it to be possible for us to even be here. Usually we try and buff up stuff like this, like the bitches part. Oh, I did a video of a smeller. So we're trying to figure out what we're going to paint on this water tank. It's a pretty massive space. We know we're going to do water as our strength. For me, art is, is so healing, you know, art is medicine. We are art and it's a huge part of indigenous culture, you know, it's, it's part of how we express ourselves, how we dance, how we sing, how we pray. And I want to be able to inspire young people, all people to be able to use art as a medium to heal and to express themselves. And in this instance, you know, I hope that it's able to heal our communities from all of this trauma that we have been experiencing from the resource colonization, from alcoholism, from poverty, just to give, some, give something to the community that's beautiful to look at, I guess. This is our livelihood. This is what our ancestors fought for so that we, as young people, will be able to understand it and then carry it on. That's part of our push in our graffiti movement is using these types of symbols to get people to you know, critically think about things. Invasive species. Their seeds spread like crazy. Desertification happens because of these plants. Water. Did they do it in person or? younger generation it's, it's our time to just show them you know show our communities that we still care I think that's why I really liked about the artwork too is um, for me what I always said that you know if the people don't remember like the beauty of who we are the beauty of not only our prayers and our ceremonies but just the beauty of this land and you know what and how it sustains us and just what we have left you know if they don't remember you know the art will be there to remind, remind them People always ask, like, what what is the one thing that you could do? How could how could we help what you guys are doing? And my answer to that, I think, is to check our privilege, check our energy privilege. You look at the history of what the United States has done to Diné people, to Indigenous people. It's genocide. 
it's, it's continuous genocide and it's still happening today. I personally have never been a proud American. You know, the U.S. government, they want to like talk about people who are illegal, you know, who aren't welcome here, but it's the U.S. government that aren't welcome. You know, they're the illegal ones to us. You know, corporations and dirty politicians, they're all about money. You know, they want money, 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 money. I would like for them to try and drink contaminated water, contaminated uranium water here, or have them try to eat money and see what happens to them. Have them drink oil or drink water that's contaminated with oil, you know? I don't think they're gonna last. Well, I think it looks good. So this says, to e nasko be ina. Nasco goes into the future, but it states is that water is our future. In order for us to continue to, to be alive, to thrive, we need water. We need to hold it precious. Maybe all this coal will be gone and realize that there is really nothing underneath the ground after they force us off. And even, even our time's like over, you know? We're in our 20s and, you know, it's not even about us anymore. It's about the next seven generations now. And that's why we're here. That's why we do what we, we're choosing to do. You know, this isn't, it's not just our community that's affected this way. There's so many indigenous communities. There's so many people of color that have to face these realities every day. And, you know, we stand in solidarity with them. You know, we, we encourage them to keep going, to keep fighting, and we'll continue to do the same thing as well. Thank you.